How are you? Screen, you are not visible on the screen, Sarisha ji. Can you still not see me? Yes, now it is okay. Uh, uh, Vinita, uh, uh, does it record as it is, as it is on my screen? Yeah, it will record the speaker's view. So whoever is speaking, their face will be shown on the screen. Okay. So when you are yeah, talking, your face, when she is talking, her face. And the, the audio okay. is Shumari Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Let us start. Vinita uh, Sarisha ji, I welcome you once again to this uh, studio of mine. I'll call this studio, nevertheless, it is just a chair. And uh, my laptop, yet it's a seed of a studio. <laughs> So I'll first let me introduce you to my Tamil audience in Tamil. Then you you, uh, you can add on to that, and then we'll proceed. Am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, yes, because your picture was not there. In today, Tamil Nanbargale, Nan in the Srimati Sarisha Komal Sarisha Rameshlal Komal. Ide pair na muttam pavdi ille Rameshlal vande avarode appa. Iver mele piriyo oru thakkathe erpatti var. Avare peswar adala unarchi vasama thannore appa vatti var solu var. Anga Thirmanath Perege, Pair Matra Parakamil, Komal, and the Purushanuria Kudumba Pair, Rendo Sandri Namadesat Lender Nuthi and Badversum Nala, South Africa, indentured labour Angakara Karumutho Telepon over it, and the Kudumba. You are allowed in the Tamil Nadu in the Ponangla, Maharashtra in the Ponangla. Bihar lay in the Ponangla, Tanude Munor, Ure, Teria, the work, Neria Pit, Adigamana Pit, Ada Angle Grumba Varutum, Varda Tamena Piria or Shradde Bhakti, Abdirkara or Samudai Panamirke, Niki, Nere Padichir Kanga, and America, Canada, Australia, and Pogama, Varda Tiki, Varanona Asa Padravanga, Ingerkara, Putapartiko. Rishikesh Hardwara Kumarwa. Yar and Netheria the Rumba Ekatoda Illar. A pretty patakurumangal Ange, South Africa. Adele in the Sarisha you were one day conjo Rumba or Dia Samana or Tanipata Tanimiano or personality. Our Appa. Our room passed some near in the full of heart. And all our heart attack lay under the open heart surgery. Rumboom ice cream mother ever Ramesh Lal Satish, you wrote a Purusha Nama South African Surnale Purinjan de Rumba Korevana Slepe Anginu. Arsil Lavandi or Piria Pogodi Pomodium Analum Kude Adele Nam Adepe Vera Sudal Adana Professor Rumbakurivar Kra Muslim Gala in the Minister Kra Anna Namades Titra Piria Nike Pandan election Ananga Ministry Le Persana Mondi Le Anadakana Tagudi Ule Satish Koman Avrode Manevi Nani Mungloda Rumba Neringi Paragir Kra in the Kurumba Tode Unarchigal Urupakam 
ஆனால் பேலன்ஸ் இன்னொரு பக்கம் ஸ்கூல் பிரின்ஸிபா டீச்சராக இருந்தால் நடிப்பு அப்படிங்கிற துறை இங்கிலீஷ் அப்படிங்கிற சப்ஜெக்ட் ஆக்டிங் ட்ராமேட்டிக்ஸ் இல்லையா ட்ராமேட்டிக்ஸ் அண்ட் இங்கிலீஷ் தட் வாஸ் யுவர் சப்ஜெக்ட் பேசிக் சப்ஜெக்ட் ஸோ அங்கிருந்து அதுக்கு பிறகு லைவ் கான்டாக்ட் இந்த மாதிரி ஆன்லைன் கான்டாக்ட் தான் இங்கே வருவார் அடிக்கடி நம்ம தேசத்துக்கு வந்து புட்டப்பருத்தி திருப்பதி நான் அங்கே போன தடவை கூட திருச்செந்தூர் போயிருந்தேன் இவரை சந்திக்க உணர்ச்சி வசம் நல்ல ஃபுல் நிறைய கனவுகள் இது அதே சமயத்தில் உறுதியான முடிவுகள் எடுக்கிற ஒரு தான் மனப்பான்மை இதுதான் சரிஷா கோமல் ரொம்ப ஆழமாக சிந்தனை பண்ணுறவங்க ஆனால் அதே சமயத்தில் சிரிப்பு புன்சிரிப்பு ஆழமாக சிந்தனை பண்ணுறவங்க நிறைய பேர் சிரிப்பை இழந்துருவாங்க இந்த மாதிரி பெண்களுக்காக நிறைய செய்யணும்னு ஆசை ஒரு பெரிய பணத்தை ஒதுக்கி நம்ம தேசத்தில் பெண்களுக்காக ஏதாவது செய்யணும் பாரதத்தில் அப்படின்னு ஆசை இருக்கும் ஸோ அந்த சரிஷா அவர்களை நான் அறிமுகப்படுத்தியிருக்கேன் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் இன்ட்ரடியூஸ்ட் யூ ஃபர்ஸ்ட் தி சவுத் ஆஃப்ரிக்கன் சினேரியோ இந்துஸ் ஹவு டிட் தே கோ தேர் ரீச் தேர் தென் யூ ஆர் ஒன் ஆஃப் தோஸ் ஃபேமிலிஸ் வித் மணி சஃபிஷியன்ட் மணி எட் யூ மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் யூ டோன்ட் ட்ராவல் டு அமெரிக்கா அண்ட் ஆஸ்திரேலியா அண்ட் கனடா பட் ரேதர் ப்ரிஃபர் டு ட்ராவல் டு பாரத் தட் இஸ் தி எமோஷனல் அட்டாச்மெண்ட் தட் யூ ஹாவ் பட் தெர் இஸ் அன்ஜ் ஆஃப் கிரீஃப் இன் மோஸ்ட் ஆஃப் தி சவுத் ஆஃப்ரிக்கன்ஸ் தட் தே டோன்ட் நோ தி வில்லேஜ் த எக்ஸாக்ட் பிளேஸ் ஃப்ரம் வேர் தே தேர் ஃபோர் ஃபாதர்ஸ் வென்ட் வென் டு சவுத் ஆஃப்ரிக்கா தட்ஸ் ஐ ஹாவ் தட்ஸ் வாட் ஐ ஹாவ் சீன் and uh, i just introduced you your family your father he is an ice cream heart full of love and so he had a heart problem and uh, bypass surgery also then satish of course active grasping the uh, situation in south africa position of hindus he could have become a, a politician but uh, the south african situation is not it has not yet transformed to take hindu uh, politicians ministers so this is the introduction i did for you you have a few contrasts emotional at the same time firm decisive deep in thoughts at the same time smiling that is the uh, introduction i did and you have a uh, dream or you say you can uh, you have a project to do some work uh, development work for girls in bharat and you have a, allotted a fund for that that's what uh, i understand so this is this was the introduction i gave now welcome to this small studio of ours there have been six interviews sarisha ji in this last few days vinita was one she is uh, from like right from childhood Uh, age of 10 she has been uh, in new zealand her school studies uh, she was only non white in a white uh, school she had uh, described that emotional that uh, um, frictional um, treatment or experiences that she got at the same time a professor a teacher school teacher of hers 
how uh, he took a personal uh, project like it uh, he took it as a challenge and uh, within the first year of her sixth class education uh, he created a bonding between the whites he talked with the parents he talked with the children extra school hours not for a salary about that teacher i asked her uh, two uh, persons persons who have influenced her she said one was her father and the second was this teacher white so that was the first interview that uh, we had then i interviewed uh, a roadside vendor who sells uh, vegetables that was very interesting very practical then uh, there was an interview of a friend of mine she was uh, an in lic agent insurance agent in the middle of uh, her life 40 35 40 she lost her husband he he had the whole he had earned a lot but lost everything and left a huge uh, debt and she had never come out of her family with two small children school boys then the struggle she faced to uh, and now she is in well off both the boys have uh, settled and in, she is very good in a very good financial position now she contributes to social fields very bold lady that was an interview then uh, i interviewed one uh, disc, one woman who performs uh, informal discourses religious discourses here nearby in sri rangam uma murali one of my sisters i interviewed that cassette also i could not extract she married her her mother died of kidney failure father had donated one kidney then when she was in second year her father wanted her to be married because the mother is dead she is motherless now there was the first choice was one who had given his uh, one of his kidneys to his father no normally we don't have a medical background we have so many fears and uh, wrong notions this small girl of 18 years she decided to marry him only because he had given one of his uh, kidneys to his uh, father that was the admiration uh, that was the factor for my admiration for her very young to me very smart now she is a principal of a school in chennai but unfortunately i could not uh, retrieve that uh, interview from the debris of this web so let us start you can uh, you start with your comment and then we'll just chit chat namaste namaste gopal ji and namaste. to whoever is listening in thank you very much for this opportunity again always a pleasure to speak to you and to hear your voice and all the wonderful things that you are doing so thank you again namaste um i am sarisha ramesh nal komal i love the way you included my family name my born and raised family name because that is equally important especially in the 21st century with the kind of issues that we are dealing with i am appreciative of that uh, respected gopal ji that you had managed to bring in the invaluable contribution that my mom and my dad have played uh, in my own personal life and growth and that of many other people as well so thank you very much for that um south africa you know at the moment has really progressed phenomenally so i have to give credit there in terms of the country but still we have very much fine tweaking uh, to do so i'm sure in due progress and due time because all good things do take time as i am also learning yes. so um, 
I think it is, uh, you know, part of the progress right now. But I am, you know, just for those that are listening in, a fourth generation South African born Hindu practicing woman. And the two things that stand out for me that I take a lot of pride in is that I am South African first, but I'm Hindu practicing. That means I also give full credit right at the very beginning to the ancestral lineage of Bharat Mata because I am who I am because of that lineage. Oh, fine. I have seen you performing your Saturday puja and uh, giving argyam. That's uh, uh, it's a pra pra part of our practice. Uh, Argyam to the sun, yes. dropping few drops of water for the sun at sunrise and sunset. Yeah, I have seen so many of them in South Africa doing that. So, so many saints have contributed to that who have visited there, or uh, reciprocally, the visits that you have made to. Uh, so, various places in Bharat where you have learned this. I especially, I remember um, our Bangalore um, no, I forget his name. He was a very frequent visitor to South Africa. He has visited almost 25 times uh, he has built a Bharat Matama temple in his home area. I forgot his name. Then the Ramakrishna Sanyasi, that uh, uh, who now I don't think he has been replaced by someone else. Very jovial, very lively Sanyasi that he was. And he attracted very uh, huge number of South African Hindus. Ramakrishna mission was a a great center, vibrant center for Hindus. Yes. Similarly, that old man, Sanyasi, in Divine Life Society, oh. uh, Sahajananda That's was his name, I think. Yes. Very quiet. Especially, I remember the thousands of pictures, colorful pictures of birds and uh, flowers that he had collected. Mm -hmm. It is a form of a type of uh, tapasya. Yes. Definitely. That was very beautiful and very enormous collection by a sannyasi. Yes. So naturally, for a short term visitor like me, if they could have influenced and cast my eyes for you, Definitely, they must have been a very uh, huge factor in your life, in your childhood and youth. So I like to know a few things about the influencing factors that kept you to this religion, this tradition of uh, lineage of Bharat. The most influential factors, there are many. I'm very blessed in the sense that number one, which for me is the priority, is having Hindu parents who are practicing Hindus. So Hindu parents who are practicing Hindus, that for me is the ultimate source of inspiration first. Um, the first time I observed the Surya Jal offered is from my dad. The first time I observed uh, sitting at the altar place in front of Sri Krishna Bhagwan and reciting the Bhagavad Gita is from my mom. So oh. it, those were the first qualities and first understanding of what uh, religious practice or rituals are from my parents. Uh, the second most influential, I would think, is the Ramakrishna Center in South Africa, for sure. We were very fortunate that we had the Ramakrishna branch in Mirbank, Durban, South Africa, and a absolutely phenomenal, selfless human being, uh, Mr. Dantal Naidu, who used to run the organization, still runs the organization uh, in Mirbank. We had regular satsangs and bhajans. So he used to trip to Bharat. And from his experiences, we got to experience the land. We got to experience the, the experiences of 
divine rituals, understanding what the various festivals were first and foremost from those experiences and uh, connections. So that was very, very important. And the third influence is that came, you know, uh, I could say quite comfortably in my early uh, youth was that from having very present spiritual mentors. And I'm very blessed that I have been directly involved uh, in Hindu organizations from South Africa linked directly to Bharat, uh, where there is spiritual mentors that have physical and direct contact with me. So that uh, constant uh, presence allows my mind to constantly be engaged in things that are wholesome uh, and deep and things that we should be able to do as practicing Hindus. And I want to also give credit to persons like yourself who's made continuous efforts to connect and to constantly teach us the, that which you understand. Those are invaluable connections. And the fact that you are from Bharat Mata itself gives you already a grand uh, position in my life. So these are the kind of influences that I think uh, has been really profound in making sure that we are practicing Hindus, making sure that we are continuing the lineage of our forefathers. So any great experience, memory, from your uh, memory regarding the role of religion, religious practice or spiritual attitude. Can you uh, dig out some memory and share with us? Exa one I remember <laughs> that was, uh, it was you know, even for me, I am a bit uh, agnostic though I look religious it uh, kindled a different world for me that uh, premonition um, picture that you had of uh, Satish being put under uh, pistol by the hijackers, yeah. something like that. It was on a fee collection day, yeah. and it happened after one or one week or ten days. Mm -hmm. uh, some such uh, memory that this spiritual attitude, because I know you have been a regular visitor to Puttaparthi Sai Baba. Yes. Uh, and you are very deeply devoted to that uh, mission and to. Puttaparthi himself, Sai Baba himself. I have heard a few incidents from you. So you can just share one or two uh, with us. Um, to come back to the uh, incident that you mentioned, it was uh, we, as a family, we used to do our Friday morning uh, Lakshmi Puja. Oh, Friday prayer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we used to do our Lakshmi prayer together on Fridays. And uh, I could very clearly uh, see exactly what was happening. And after the prayers, I mentioned this exactly to Satish. Exactly a week later, exactly the Friday later, uh -huh. uh, it happened. But uh, because he was made aware, I'm very blessed that he was able to trust uh, the permission. Um, <laughs> and he was able to do what was necessary. I think things worked out much more safer and much more, you know, it was a healthy solution. Nobody got physically hurt and I'm so grateful for that. Um, and it happened as it should have happened, that something was meant to happen, it happened. But the extent of which or the devastation of which could have been was uh, cut through, I feel in my heart. And that is purely because of divine intervention, no other explanation at all. Yes. Um, my other experience that is very, you know, that has linked me directly to Shri Satya Sai Baba because in our home, uh, we've not been directly, uh, my, you know, my parents never said to us that you will follow Shivji Bhagwan or Krishna Bhagwan or you will follow Mother Saraswati. Or it was uh -huh. God. It was God in practice. It was understanding. Typical Hindu, typical Hindu attitude. No, no. My mother never prescribed one particular form of God. Yes. There was no prescription about it, but the values of the dharma was very, very yes. 
Yes. So I understood it from that. But of course, in our altar place, because my dad's mum had the murti of Sri Krishna Bhagwan, so my dad has that murti, and so we also, you know, start yes. with that. Uh, so my understanding of that really was that God is present. Uh, I have to live through the practices to feel connected. Um, and so Sri Satya Sai Baba was, you know, always spoken about um, amongst our spiritual circles and our religious circles, but I never really felt a deep connection. But I also in my mind, I'm also very inquisitive and I'm also very analytical about things. You know, if I surrender, I surrender wholeheartedly. But mm -hmm. I first do my background work and I think that is important also. Yes. Um, it so happened that in uh, 2000 and um, I think it was 2007, um, no, I think it was 2002. Take Lady, I just asked her if she is listening. <laughs> uh. Uh, in 2002, I was lying in my bed and I had the full uh, awareness that somebody is in my room. Um, oh. Yeah, and this is a story that I only ever mentioned to my immediate family. So uh, it's quite possible. Many, you have mentioned this to me. Immediate that family, that's it, yes. <laughs> floating. Correct. And <laughs> I could see him perfectly and I opened my eyes and I could see Sri Satya Sai Baba perfectly in uh, my room. And uh, I tried to wake Satish up, but he says, don't worry. And I looked again and I saw Swami walk across and he looked at me and he looked and he, looked and he walked. And I just observed him and he observed me. And, he was gone. and it was the very same day that my dad had a, a heart attack and he had oh. Oh. and uh, normally you know i think i because of my connection with my father i am very restless when something like that happens very agitated but on that day i remember satish saying to me don't worry whatever it is you'll be fine uh, you know just embrace swami and uh, quite truthfully when I went to the hospital, I couldn't find my father. Uh, he had, was taken to be resuscitated. He had literally passed on and they had to resuscitate him. And the wonderful anecdote about this is the surgeon that resuscitated him, his name is Hanuman. So my dad oh. is also a great Hanumanji Bhakt. So, and the surgeon didn't give up on my father. He, you know, he did what he needed to do, uh, even though perhaps he shouldn't have to, you know, Try to resuscitate him as much as he did, but he didn't give up. And it was on that day that I had the vision of Sri Satya Sai, on the same day that this experience, and for me, there is no coincidence in the world. I don't believe in coincidences. So all of that uh, put together gave me a perfect understanding that I am so protected, that I am hmm. so guided, and my family are so protected and guided. And I continued from that day to affirm my, the role that Sri Satya Sai Baba played in my life. Hmm. Well, one more thing. Here, we live in our own land. We know the people around. They are also very similar. Uh, definitely, there are shades of behaviors. Yeah. All shades of them. Yet, most of the uh situation around us is predictable mm -hmm. there uh when this with uh, whites on the one hand who have been rulers then blacks who have been subjected to a very rude um li uh, life by the rulers racial discrimination and now they are uh, ascending the power. I have seen most of the Hindus speaking harsh words for the blacks. They used to call Ravan or Rakshas and all those words. I found very few families, and US was one, Satish also, who had. Uh, uh, in spite of uh, a few bitter experiences, you had a very, very positive and very grand view about the 
the uh, blacks the original owners of that land that's that was very rare for me that was an election year when i was there and we used to discuss a lot about that uh, minority front aligning with uh, anc and we should vote for anc or minority front not for us yet uh, 60 70% of them voted for nnp and dp that was the election atmosphere but a very few because most of our views are formed on our own personal experience yes. to go beyond a personal experience and to see a wider uh, sight a, a deeper uh, insight that requires a lot uh, a lot of balance within us that is a specialty that was i i felt about satish and you so what do you think about this uh, this uh, trying to come together trying to create an integration uh, between the various communities how much success has south africa achieved in that and uh, what about our own youth getting influenced and uh, you, as you said uh, leaving the lineage or the root of their ancestral root bharata hindu practicing hindu that is what you said so they are just hindus non practicing or totally into the other behavioral patterns so what do you think about this situation in south africa such a loaded question gopal ji <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first thing is that you know when i think back south africa at the moment in terms of indians uh, it's 160 years more than 160 years that indians have settled from bharat mata to south africa okay and uh, they came already with the value of resilience so they already had that value of resilience when they came to the land so we were born and i am fourth generation we are born from that value of resilience of strength that's the first point the second point is i think worldwide today there is slower progress right now for the the fact that we are presently in kaliyu and if we expect it sound a little bit voice ha ah. i think worldwide it is really important that we understand that right now we are experiencing the kind of world atrocities that we are quite frankly because we are in the process of unearthing spirit from a spiritual background that's what's happening it's destruction that's creating something more constructive for us in the future so that's something that we have to remember at the back of our mind the attitude of south african hindus towards other uh, race groups uh, you know that is again a personal matter there are people who have empowered themselves and who understand the lineage that they come from and the fact that we ourselves are coming there as indentured laborers we have come to the land from that so we have to give respect to those that first belonged in the land absolutely Correct. important yes the second important point is that they uh, you know if we if we accept vasudeva kutumbakam if we accept namaste as our greeting that i see divine in you if we accept that the whole world is one big family that i see the divine in you and i respect and worship the divine that is in you then who am i now to trespass against those things and still consider myself to be beautiful in you yes so we have to be able to work with a mindset that gives us the opportunity to truly be embodiments of divine ourselves that is really important however that being said is it easy to do no it's not easy to do because the south african climate at the moment is challenging hence many of us have to even now leave south african environment and work outside of our homes to try and give our families something more okay but does it mean that it's any less in terms of progress not at all i think from where south africa was and to where south africa is the human contact and the humanizing of 
individuals, the dignity that's been given to human beings, not being seen as a race, black, white, uh, Asian, colored, what have you, no. The fact that we are looked as South Africans, that is a huge improvement in terms of constitutional value. And for me, that means South Africa is progressing. All the other little tidbits are things that have to fall into place within the time frame that's required. Beautiful, very good. Um, but it's a challenge. It's How do we challenge. teach our own youth to behave in this atmosphere? And the the first accept uh, the condition that you said we have to respect and prioritize the basic owners of that land. Absolutely. We cannot uh, transgress. The second thing, how do we teach the uh, youth from the other races uh, the attitude towards us? We are, we are very soft. We are very broad. When uh, there is violence everywhere, our doors are all open. Our, uh, we, are, we are not uh, security conscious because we trust we try to integrate. So how do we, uh, on both sides, to teach uh, the, our own youth, our values, our lineage, and our behavior with the interactions with the other races? And how, do, uh, how does the government teach the youth in general in education about this integration of various races? coming together because it is visible these colors so uh, it's a very challenge it's, a, it's the most challenging aspect of a south african life and i loved south africa only because of this at every step i had to be conscious of this in our land i am never conscious because all are uh, similar persons around me. This aspect, integrating with them, is not uh, in the background or in the foreground of my mind. But there, it is so obvious and it is so challenging. So, in that respect, your roles as uh, social workers, our organization's roles, mm that should be how do, what do you feel about this you know we can have the best constitution we can have the best scriptures but if we do not practice it it means nothing yes um, so at the end of the day it requests and it calls on every single individual to truly be ambassadors of those that constitution of those scriptures that we preach we need to be able to model the kind of behavior ourselves because ultimately, you know, we can have fantastic platforms where we are speaking to people. And yes, we have to have more hard conversations, more conscious conversations, must have it. Very, very important. But still, ultimately, the responsibility lies on me as an individual observing enough and feeling enough, empowered enough to want to make a change. So I think it is about, again, individual modeling the kind of behavior, modeling the kind of attitude that we want to experience in the world. So if we want to experience that, we, it starts with us first. The change has to start first with ourselves. And then only can we expect somebody else to be doing that uh, in order for it to be effective long term. Because we want the change to be sustainable. And in order for it to be sustainable, it has to first come from within myself, that I get it, I understand it. So even though I'm living in so much of sludge and mud, I'm still able to work through it because Beautiful. it's within me. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Now, last uh, point that we'll discuss, it's time now. Maybe it will get disconnected in 40 minutes about the i don't normally 
divide the society as male and female yet it's a huge point for discussion everywhere about the status about the empowerment of uh, women folk uh, in the advanced countries it is of a different kind here it's more economical independence that's the priority field here in our field um, especially the urban life where values are coming down or where um, uh, harshness or arrogance is visible everywhere so the experience that women folk are put into with uh, women also coming out uh, of their homes on the road all the 24 hours doing various sorts of jobs so what do you feel because i know uh, that's a very dominant subject in your mind uh, in Arab world, probably with uh, very, very harsh uh, laws, repressive laws and very tough uh, policing, probably this is all stopped with whale, uh, head to toe whale and all. But in Western world or in our democratic, our country, what do you feel about this aspect? Yeah, in today's uh, modern, less uh, educated, uh, less cultured, arrogant youth, me, a hugely uh, bloated me, and uh, with uh, uh, the feeling that they are to be suppressed, kept under control. It can take violent and physical. Uh, yeah. I don't know. What do you feel? Yeah, I, I hear what you are saying. The bottom line is the disrespect on females is a worldwide phenomenon. It's not just one country that we can identify and say that this country is, you know, the highest in terms of that because we also need to look at the geographics and the dem you know exactly how large the population is now my concern is this we as females need to, as females we need to be able to empower ourselves especially hindu women for example i want to be able to speak from that background because that's my strength okay we need to be able to take opportunities like the divine rituals that we have the for example right now we're in the heart of navaratri my whole idea and understanding of Navaratri is divine intervention. That oh. she comes in that sense that despite what you are dealing with in the world, despite the disrespect from the various uh, extremities that you are dealing with, take the opportunity to surrender to the mother and use this divine opportunity to truly surrender and find your balance again. Find your balance as to who you are what is the innate quality that you bring to the world and be able then to rejuvenate, to go out again and do it. The whole issue of uh, women empowerment is extremely important because if we look at worldwide, women have been put right at the back of the heart and mind and effect uh, in terms of many aspects of the world. But still, still, there has been a marked effort made in terms of leadership of women in the home, leadership of women in the community, leadership of women in the country. So we as individuals, and rightly as you said, don't look at it as a male and female issue. Look at it as a human issue, that it is about human dignity that needs to be restored. And if we understand it from that perspective, we will not then want to say you are less able to do something or you are more able to do something. It is about your latent potential as an individual. What capacity or potential you have to bring back to the world. And that is what we need. And that's the reason why I am so madly and crazily and actively in love with organizations like Rashtriya Sevika Samiti, Hindu Sevika Samiti, 
because it is female spiritual mentors who aspire for every individual to live their best life, that we, are, we have the capacity to not only live for ourselves, but also when we are living for ourselves and living our best life, we impact and influence our community positively. And that's Beautiful. something we need to be able to remember. That if I am well mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, I impact and I influence the community that I live in. So if in the role as mother, the role as sister, the role as wife, the role as neighbor, whatever role I am playing, I am then influencing positively, not just me. It's 11 hours. But also the community at large. Oh, is it uh, saying we have to conclude? No. But so there was some sound voice. Okay. Uh, that's that's why it has been a very pleasurable uh, experience talking with you. You have so so much clarity in selection of words, in the flow of idea. It was a very grand, a very good day. Um, experience listening to this. So, if I say you have been a writer, I know the notes on my fridge. Yes, refrigerator or fridge, notes on my fridge. That was a small booklet that you had, I don't know if you had brought it in print also. I saw it in the uh, visual media, social media. So, if I say, ask you to come with one single word which our to describe this life, what will be that? To describe this life? Our life, your life, or the life in general, one word or one of one or two few words I that think, is life you know ultimately we all want to surrender because we really don't have any control and as soon as we <laughs> understand that we don't have any control as soon as we as soon as we get it in our heads i think mm -hmm. our hearts know that really i don't have control but as soon as our minds know that i really don't have any control and we surrender then. And surrender for me to Sri Satya Sai Baba. Surrender to you to something that's more divine and that you easy for you to capture in your heart. As soon as we do that, I think all of us want to live happily. Only when we start to surrender will we truly start to live more happily. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. That, is, that was the last word Sri Krishna spoke in uh, Gita. Sarva Dharman Parityajya. Leave out everything. Mame Kam Sharanam Raja. Ekam. You just surrender to me. I'll take care of you. Don't worry. <laughs> he says in the 18th chapter. So Sarishaji will conclude. It was a very joy, joyous experience talking with you. I thought I should include Sarisha Apna Hirasha also in this conversation. Oh. But then I forgot to convey it to you. So if she could. Is your night for her in New Zealand? It's my late night now. Late night. Yeah. That doubt came into me, so I will we won't disturb her. She would definitely appreciate it. Ah yes, that would have been very good. Yeah, yeah. I know. As two sisters, normally in a family, we, we have seen sisters are very closely bound with each other. Males, they form their own world and they just uh, are uh, the bonding, bondage uh, slowly weakens. But sisters, and especially you two, uh, One correction. Hirasha and Sarisha. Huh? Not so in my family. My brother. He, we always no, no, I'm not talking about your brother. I know your my brother, brother and my, my both sisters. Yes, yes. We have been very blessed to be able to create a relationship and connection. Yes, and yes. Plus, is all other normal day-to-day -day kind of drama that happens. No, I was talking about you too. 
yes. uh, how closely you are bound yes. with each other. Yes. So that uh, she should have been here. Yes. Okay, we'll discuss it. So let us conclude. Namaste to you. Uh, divinity is always with us. It is we are a form of divinity. Yes. So let the let the divine do his uh, will. So we'll conclude. Namaste. Namaste, Gopalji. Thank you again for this opportunity. Really grand to speak to you. And also, mm. Vidika ji, thank you again for allowing us this technology opportunity. Much appreciated to you also. Yes, 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 definitely.